interview and job search strategies at work. This is episode 18, and I'm going to entitle it uh, Leadership Techniques That Really Work. <laughs> um, who would become a leader? Day one, I'm a leader. Hey, awesome. Wow, I'm a manager leader. I would say leader more than manager because manager, you just manage things. Leader, you lead people. And your your company, whoever you, you work for, and you, if you get the uh, awesome responsibility of being able to become a leader, uh, you know, do it. Here, here's a couple tips that have worked for me uh, and that I've seen and that I'd like to see in other uh, environments, in other companies, basically. And it goes like this. So, you know, day one, you just started uh, at your job. Uh, you came from another company, or maybe you're there. Um, let's assume you came from another company, and you're a leader now. You're, you're a uh, supervisor, a leader, and you're you know, you're responsible, uh, obviously, to the company. And your company, the CEO, the C-suite people, have given you um, their directive, their vision. They want to do the X, Y, Z with the company. And so now your task is to uh, take that vision and put it in the minds of your uh, the people that work for you. And, you know, how do you do that? First things first, you learn all their names, right? You learn all of their names. You ask them um, a little bit about themselves. Maybe do um, a little background on them. You, but you tell them about yourself as well, you know, your background. And then you, um, after that, you write, you have them write down what their job is. Like, what do they do on a day-to-day -day basis? on a weekly basis. So you might have, if they could even have it to where they write down, I do this per day on a week. And maybe you, you when you first meet them, you ask them that. You say, uh, would you mind just writing down what you do for a whole week and what tasks, imagine if you're uh, an, an HR person and you're writing your job description. You know, it, initially that's going to seem like a little scary to them because they're going to say, well, why are you want that? You know, are you trying to get rid of me? Basically, whatever. And make sure that they know that that's not the case. What you're after, what you're trying to do as a leader is you want to know during the 168 hours, during the time they work there in a whole, you know, five days a week or however long it is, how could you, you know, if you, you take their information and let's just assume you have 10 folks working for you, you take that information from everyone, their, their tasks, their, their, what time do they go to lunch typically in a week, you know, uh, what time do they take breaks, you know, or how, how long, maybe do it per hour, you know, in an hour's time, what are they working on? You collectively have that. And then what you're developing from that, after that's done, is you develop a um, a an expectation list, meaning um, based on everybody's job, you already do this as a base. You do this, this, uh, you know, and then uh, your your goal is to do it as like a versus you were in this you're in a slot you're working at a desk and you work 40 hours a week you're there 40 hours a week get rid of that business model that's not what you're after what you're after is it takes them x amount of time to do a task so it's more task related or project related than i'm here feeling you know i'm here 40 hours a week um and i'm just showing up to work you know, the, why do you do that? So, you you want you want to do that because someone some people work harder on a task than others, and if you know all of your the 
your your the ten person what they do. Now you can see who does less or who does more, and maybe there's they need a little guidance or they need a, some coaching, and so then you take them all and get them in a room, right? And you've already reviewed it. You've already reviewed everything yourself, and you've you've put together a manage expectations list. A this is what I, you know, I expect, or uh, the company expects, basically, or I expect, if you will, from you. And this is how long it takes you to get this done, based on the data we've shown you collectively. You don't single anybody out. You say, this is how long this project takes to get done. And what you're doing is, you're, you're, you start off with um, one every two weeks you have a, a paid lunch so you cater the lunch every payday let's say every usually companies get paid every two weeks so what you'll do is you'll you'll have it during lunch period you have an extended lunch period so it's a two-hour lunch essentially but you pay for it or the company pays for it they cater it and you get everybody your team in their room and you just talk about ideas you talk about whatever and you might even whiteboard some of that ideas as well. Solutions you can come up with. How do we cut costs? How do we save time, really? You know, how can I make it to where... Because your goal is this. Your goal is to have it to where that mom or that dad or that, um, you know, that woman or that man, they, they have their hour back. They have more time. They... When they go home, they don't have to stay late to do a task because they, you guys have, you've collectively thought about this process and you come up with a solution to make it faster. The other thing to do is to uh, ha start a SharePoint site. And your company has a SharePoint site, of course. And all this information, meaning their, the tasks, their, your man, their uh, expectations, what you expect from them, um, you put that in SharePoint. And then you you create a tasker, a, your, you know, 10-person team, each people have their own tasks. Maybe you just say as a blanket statement, um, this is how you do these tasks. And this is perhaps like an Excel spreadsheet where you track the different tasks. Maybe there's something you need to um, could troubleshoot or manage a piece of equipment perhaps or a process or something like this and you put that in there and somebody touches it every day you know you get everybody in the habit of touching it every day or somebody touches it every day you know and then that's the very first thing right there so that they don't have to think about it they just go in and they just like okay I'm um I'm just looking at my what I need to do. I don't have I don't have to think. You just go in and do it, done. And eventually what your your goal is to make it automated. How can you automate that task? How can it be where you just look at an email or somebody gets an email, the team gets an email and says, okay, that task is good. That's what you're getting at right there. To where you, you don't no one has to check it. Unless there's something wrong with it, whatever that thing is, and you can get it. Hopefully, you can get it. The idea is to get it to where it's an email that's sent out, and everybody checks it. And okay, that's the other thing there. The couple more things is this: when you first become a manager, I've already talked about obviously the food, getting everybody together, talking ideas, the SharePoint side. That's critical, uh, and then also. Uh, plan out a time and day where you tell your staff, I'm not going to bother you from this time to this time. Give them, give them one hour per day, if possible, of uninterrupted time to where um, you're not going to bother them with other things, with other tasks. And you won't have to bother them really that much because you're going to have the, the tracker, the daily task tracker. The ma you can manage the, expe the expectations of them. You have everything on SharePoint you need as leader. You have, okay, I see what they've done, the X, Y, Z. So that when your manager, your, uh, your, your leader, if you will, your leader asks, you're the, 
the C-suite people ask you, the chief whoever, chief uh, technical officer, uh, chief uh, information officer, whoever, ask you the status in XYZ. Well, you know it because you have the SharePoint site. It's there already. It's already done. Boom, done. You know, and if, and guess what? If, if it's not done, then you can do it. If other people, there, nobody's, how can you do it? Well, you have a, you have a spreadsheet or you have a, a documentation that says this is how you do it. Like seventh grade level, basically. I, this is how you do this check, X, Y, Z. You make it very, very simple. You don't want people at work to think all that much. I mean, I know I, a couple cops ago, I said like, uh, you know, knowledge, uh, as companies go larger, knowledge uh, goes down. But your goal in this is, is to make it easy for your employees to where they can focus on generating ideas for the company, or generating more creative things for the company. Uh, and then make this, this task so easy. You know, make it, make it to where it's a project. Google does this, where you'll come in and you'll you'll work on a project for how many hours, and you go home, or you, however long it takes you, you might work two days that day or whatever it is, and it works for them, and they're a big, huge company. Uh, so this is this is the whole idea behind that. I mean, this is not the whole idea, but this is just my take on it anyway. And the other thing is to have a uh, so I, I hit on the uh, lunch of course every two weeks that's critical right there there's SharePoint site where you you get uh, information from your employees or from people that work for you the other thing obviously I said is give them time away from you every day so where they don't you're not bothering them the other thing is is most likely they're going to sit at a cubicle in some sort of cubicle. So have a yellow... You, you ever been in the airport and you've seen that... Um, those lines, those... Um, they separate uh, the cordon off things where they just like pull this... I guess it's like a... I, I guess like a lanyard or it's some sort of like... Um, you know, separator. It's just this pole, right? It has this thing that comes out. And it attaches to the other pole, and it like creates like a little segment, uh, I guess, a, a built-in. What do you call those things? Uh, cordon off, like almost like you ropes an area off, you know. But what you do is you have whatever color you designate, and you have it to where if somebody's in their cubicle and they don't have a, a door in their cubicle to close it, you have a little lanyard, or you have some sort of like uh, thing that 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 cordon again the cordon off thing to where they just like cordon off their their entryway just a little slide thing you know like a little um rope basically thing or whatever it's called um on their cubicle to where they're not bothered you know that tells everybody hey hey uh don't bother me i'm you know whatever reason what whatever it is why you don't want to bother them, you don't know but let let the um let the people that work for you designate or, or make that decision. Like maybe they're uh, stressed out. Their kids, you know, got a bad grade in school or something. Or their kids, you know, were sick or something. You, you don't know. But you give them the opportunity for that. Just like, okay, leave me alone. Leave, you know, of course, you got to trust your team, right? So it, it's a two-way street. They have to trust you. You have to trust them. And... You putting the vision out there that the company gave you, that's really the critical portion right there. You know, knowing all their names, knowing a little bit about them. What what do they like to do? Are they, you know, does one person like to work later? And then, so what you're doing is you're building up a gradual, uh, you're, you're, you're more and more, you're giving them more leeway, basically, right? They're showing you, hey, I'm a good worker. You know, the idea thing, that's profitability. Because what a company would have to go out and, and pay for this stuff, but you already have your employees um, giving you giving you good knowledge, and you know explain that to the C sweet people who maybe don't think that way. Explain to them, hey, listen, we're getting some good uh, hands-on experience here. We're getting good. We'd have to pay for this stuff, so we're getting it for free. 
So what's a lunch? A couple, a hundred bucks or whatever it is. That's that's nothing compared to what the ideas are you're going to get. Their SharePoint site is a peace of mind. It is a collaboration. It's a, I don't have to think. Employees, when I can focus on as employee, I can focus on other things. I don't have to do those little tasks every day. And you know, and then you're giving me oh you know you're not going to bother me. Whoa, thank you. You know, as an employee, like you don't you're not bothering me. You're going to give me an hour per day of just I'm not going to bother you. I'm not going to call. I'm not going to come and bother you for anything. And then the other thing is they're going to give me autonomy, basically, because you, obviously you're working in an office, right? And and you got to know this, that the, the world is going towards work from home, you know? And if you can get it to where you make it that less bearable, because just imagine, think of yourself as, an, uh, you know, in their shoes. They get up in the morning, six, seven, whatever it is, they come to work. They have to get dressed, they have to take a shower. They have to come to work. Maybe they have to get the kids to school or whatever it is. They have to come to work. They have their, you know, like morning ritual, right? If you can knock it down to where that's easy for them, they don't, you know, make it less stressful at work. But you're, if you make it less stressful, those little things that you think you need or whatever, uh, you know, are things you need done, just make it easier for them. You know, when you do that, you're going to have a better, happier employee. You're going to have a more productive employee because they can just get stuff done. And because I'll tell you, if you, if you don't know this already, when you work from home, you work more hours. You're more productive when you work from home than you ever will be working in an office. 1,000%. I, I, I know that from experience myself, having done it and then having worked for myself as well. 1,000% you're more productive at home. Because what do you do? You get up and you go to work. You don't have to change your clothes. You don't have to um, get... To, <laughs> okay, kids want to go to school. You get them ready, you know. But you're you're on the clock. You're working. You uh, It's an idea and you write it down and you work. And you can work more. You can work more hours. You know, normal shift at work okay, it's, you know, it's eight to four, let's say, and then you go for an hour lunch. Well, at a, at a place, you get home at, you know, let's say it's an hour, right? An hour there, hour back. It's two hours out of your day. Well, if you work it from home, ah, I'd save that two hours. Ha <laughs> look at that, you know? And I, and then I'm, I'm more happy if I'm working from home. So think of that as a leader. You know, what, what things that they have to go through? Your, your whole goal here is to eventually let them work from home. So it's a segment. It's, you, you start it every, um, every couple of, uh, one by one. You know, you, you trust the employee. The employee trusts you more. It's, you give them more leeway. Okay, they've shown they can do more. Um, okay, they can, they can work without a, a you know, a... a so initially, when you're there as a, a leader, you're there. You're seeing them every day, right? So when, whenever you first, you know, transition, you get all the, um, you know, the, the, the meals and all that, you can still do all that work from home, meaning they come in, um, you know, maybe one day a week or something like that, uh, whenever they choose, and you guys have that lunch or something, you know, or whatever you want to do. And the other... So the other thing is, um, um, the other thing I was going to say is, um, as you have more, you know, you're working, you're working there, you work in the office, you see the people every day, but when you transition into a, a company or you transition your employees to a work from home full time, you're going to have to have more meetings, um, you know, and then let them, you know, just work into it, basically. You know, that, from my experience, it's very effective to have more meetings. You know, two two meetings a week. And then have a, also have like a, a conference line where you set up to where you let employees just chat and talk. Unpaid time, you know, for like a half hour or something like that. They're not always going to use it, by the way. 
Uh, but it's, it's going to be very effective, a very effective usage of your company's time. These are just some good ideas that I, have worked for me. Uh, and then some things I've seen. And, you know, honestly, you know, I, I didn't hit on training, but you definitely want to have a, 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 tra a training. Uh, you know, what companies don't do, it, you'll see it probably. A lot of them don't have a train their own training uh, environment. So make a, you know, build your own training environment. Have Employ your, your worker. Ask them, give them the tools. Adobe Create, um, Cam, Camtasia, uh, Bandicam, something like that, um, to to create their own videos. You know, create company videos. Create if you're, for instance, you're an IT company. This makes it just real simple. Create your own YouTube channel. Create your own Twitter. And and the employees that work for you, you know, ask them to contribute. You know, I mean, if they want to, you know. It's just going to be so much beneficial, you know, for you. And then the other thing, the last thing I think I'll really hit on is um, um, in lieu of vacation time. For instance, when you, if someone wants to go on vacation and you know what they're working on and you know their, 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 their ability, their, um, how they get stuff done, you know. Of course, you know, after you know them a little bit and you trust their work and all that, and you understand that they can do projects and all that on time, you know, give them the opportunity to, when they go on vacation, if they want to, you present it to them, you know, to work work from home, if, if possible, while they're on vacation. And, you know, if you know it takes, there's a project that needs done or something, and you know they can do it, and... For instance, what I'm saying is, in an eight-hour time, there's probably somebody on your team who can do something that normally takes eight eight hours of time. They can do it in like three hours. Well, there you go. You, you know, that's just your justification right there. Uh, they'll say, oh, okay, go on vacation and, you know, do this project or whatever. You know, they're going to get free vacation, essentially. No vacation days whatsoever. And, of course, you're going to have meetings, right? They're still involved in the meetings. They're a phone call away. You know, so they, they feel, they still feel engaged. You still are able to get information from them. The team's able to get information from them for their vacation. And that may, you know, the, you may just, you may want to just like, um, tell them, oh yeah, or give the suggestion, su rather suggestion. Hey, you know, you, you know, you, you, you can't work, you know, after hours, you know, like you can on your vacation, you could work, you know, um, 2 p.m. or you can work any time and it doesn't matter what um just as long as the work gets done you know and, and just put that present that opportunity to them and it's gonna be really well so they don't have to worry about oh are they you know uh, is my team still in you know she's he or she's part of a team and they want to feel like connected to the team well they're still connected they're just on the phone uh, so these are just some really good uh, things that I think work for a a, 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 inter, a job and you know once you become a leader you know how do you you know how do you um, separate yourself from your your competition you become a better leader you lead better and then when what happens is your your people are less likely to leave you know I mean I know there's money and that's a factor but when it takes, I think, like twenty thousand dollars to hire a person, something like that. So you're you're saving HR money basically from not hiring another person, and that's how you. Sometimes that's how you have to present it to uh, the company. Hey, listen, our our retention costs are a lot. We have to pay a lot of money just to retain people. Well, what can we do? We'll take that twenty thousand dollars that we use to buy another or get another employee. Well, let's take that and. And if we spread out, we have 10 employees, that's only $2,000, right? Oh, wow. $2,000 to keep everybody here? Whew. Okay. What can we do with that $2,000 per employee? I don't know. Hmm. Think of something, right? I mean, that's awesome, right? That's so simple. So simple. Easy peasy. Uh, anyway, I appreciate everybody listening to this recording, this podcast, and have a great day.